this is a place that is actually very familiar to us in the time we've been here in the Realm Reborn. You're currently looking at two significant locations. And one of them it was a place that used to be home to the Science of the Seventh Dawn in Year One. And situated behind it is Cape Westwind, a former outpost of the Guardian Empire. But this particular area actually holds other significance for us, and it is for that reason that we've come here today. As so, as Don approaches, greetings people of the world, Matthew back with you here in Overall Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. It is year 2, day 48 for EDSS and the Realm Reborn, and last time we made our way to the end of the main story of patch 2.3 as we helped out Alphanode to found his new organization, his new free company, or I guess in this case it will be a grand company, known as the Crystal Braves. And so they will be the people that will be spread across Eorzea, that will be representing all of them, not just a single nation within Eorzea. But, of course, we're taking a break from that since we've reached the end of the patch 2.3 main storyline, so the sun is starting to rise here in Western Thanlin, and it's time for us to get the sun rising on another mystery featuring our hilarious Inspector Hildebrand. So, to get started on that, it is time for us to speak with our old friend Ellie. Yeah, my comp my controller got stuck for a while. It kept moving forward. I had actually had to pull it back in order to stop myself from moving forward and crashing into a rock. <laughs> so yes, Ellie, the reporter for the Mythical Eye, will get us started on the new Inspector Hildebrand mystery. So let's speak with her and take on the challenge entitled The Business of Betrothal. Ali has put her skills as a reporter to good use. Oh, there you are. I've been doing some investigating on my own since we last parted. I believe we found our Lapis Maiden. The girl's name is Arabella, daughter of one Master Gugaremu, a prominent member of the East Aldenar Trading Company. Her eyes and hair are most exceptional shade of blue. Her beauty is the talk of the Sultanate. Her purported beauty, I should say. You see, none have actually seen the girl in the flesh. Apparently, her father is the overprotective sort. Some say that the maiden has never set foot outside the family's well-guarded estate. But all this is about to change. Rumor has it that the girl is to be wed. And not just that to anyone, mind you. To the heir to the Bruguer Consortium. The formal announcement is set to be made at a commemorative feast to be jointly hosted by the two family businesses. The venue is Costa del Sol, where preparations are going on as we speak. Word on the street is that the bride-to-be will be making a rare public appearance. It is here that the thief intends to strike. I couldn't be more certain of it. Piqued your interest, have I? My sources tell me that the bride's father is already in Costa del Sol overseeing the preparations. This is one scoop I'm not going to miss, and you're welcome to come along. And so, off goes Ali to Costa del Sol. So, let's go ahead and join her there. Yeah, we've had business in Costa del Sol before. It was, of course, the main focal point of the series of challenges that we did for the Company of Heroes that allowed us access to be able to fight against Titan back in Year One. So, now that we've arrived at Costa del Sol, as the sun is rising here... Yeah, it's not often you get to come here at sunrise, but you can't help but and that, that this is a pretty sweet shot. <laughs> that, that is a pretty sweet shot right there, you have to admit. Hey there, Whiskite. Yeah, he was the leader of the Company of Heroes. So, here's Guguremu. So, let's speak with him. Hello there. You're not one of my associates. The ba this banquet is of our invited guests only. If you have no business here, be on your way at once. Beg pardon, good sir. My name is Ellie, reporter of the Mythal Eye. If I might have just a moment of... Ah, oh, yes, that too guild sensationalist rag. I read your tiresome screed about the self-styled phantom thief in his letter of challenge. If you have come to tell me my daughter is in danger, I can assure you that your concern is entirely unwanted. I have not kept my Arabella safe to this day to see her whisked away from me by some fly-by-night rogue. I spend no expense in securing the best protection that money can buy. Speaking of which... 
Is this the best you can do? Three guards? <laughs> You're gonna need more than three if you want to succeed. And look, they're all smiling with their goggles on. The brass blades of Gabra, an elite unit of the most lethal swordsmen in the Sultanate. They say one of them caused the man's heart to burst just by looking at his uh, looking at him askance. The moment they set eyes on the woman, thief will be his last. <laughs> it certainly looks serious. Is the thief uh, obliging enough to allow himself to be seen? Or do those goggles serve some purpose other than making the wearer look utterly ridiculous? Yeah, that would be Briarden. Consulting Inspector Briar, then? Your reputation precedes you. And what printer would you propose? I prom promise some of the wealthiest men in the room are my daughter will be attending the festivities. To renege on such word, you would, ha would have dire implications for the family trade. My proposal is a simple one. Entrust the investigation to me. The thief will be in shackles before the banquet commences. And it will cut us to naught but a wit of your precious skill. <laughs> yeah, services for free definitely seems like a good idea. Very well, let us see if your reputation is deserved. But consider yourself warned. Greater fortunes than you, you will ever know hinge upon this banquet. I will not tolerate any disturbances. Well, let's hope for your sake that it goes down like that. Such touch and concern for his coin purse. If only he can muster the same for his daughter. But do tell, Inspector, after he slipped under our noses last time, what makes you so confident that you can't catch our thief this time around? A man may boast a thousand faces, but he has a, but a single modus operandi, and it is painfully obvious. A letter of challenge. A precious treasure whisked away from its rightful owner in the broad light of day. This tells me that our thief is an attention seeker with supreme confidence in his abilities. Doubtless he means to target the maiden using the same methods he used to abscond with a treaty blade. And so... You always have to keep adjusting your glasses. Even now, the fiend is in our midst, having assumed the identity of someone who be in close proximity to Miss Arabella at the feast. Evo lady narrow the field. What do you have in mind? Arabella's betrothed, Van, would be an obvious target for our thief. So too would be his father, Morgant. Yoto Noto and his wife, Sayana, the guest of honor, will give a toast to the cabal's happiness. Both will be standing close to the stage where the bride to be is set to appear. Needless to say, we cannot run Ulat Gegorumu himself. And finally, we have Luenhout, a steward of Guguremu's estate and Miss Arabella's personal assist attendant. All the key players, save for the Lapis Mate and ourselves, have assembled in Costa del Sol. Doubtless the phantom thief lurks among them, his face concealed, gathering information and planning his course of attack. We will begin our questioning of our suspects immediately. Should you encounter any suspicious individuals, you will report back to me at once. And that's... <laughs> no eating on the job. No, it just happens to be... Hildebrand Mandeville! I could smell the stench of idiocy and incompetence from my mama The pleasure is all mine, contriving Inspector Bryden. Forgive me for not revealing myself sooner. I was simply conducting a better preliminary undercover investigative work. Yet to see through my ingenious disguise with such ease, Yes, I dare say your powers of observation rival even my own. Feel not, friends. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, have arrived to defend the Maiden's Honor as only a Mandeville man can. <laughs> well, the Brass Blade certainly seems to think he'll do a good job. And would it help for you to take your ha the fish out of your hair? He 
does realize there's a fish stall in his head, doesn't he? Apparently not. Good inspector, I realize we may have not seen item monocle in the past, but a fair maiden's virtue may have a very life is a stick. From one gentleman to another, let us put aside our differences. Yes, I would welcome your assistance in this case. Me? Assist you? Aren't you a funny man? Oh, it makes no matter. My plan is so flawless that not even your bungling can interfere this time. If you wish to assist me, you may do so by keeping watch over their suspects. In the meantime, I have a promising lead to investigate. I shall return before the banquet begins. Well, I know this may be asking much. Do try not to do anything too stupid in my absence, will you? I won't speak with you, but not here. I will be waiting for you outside Costa del Sol. Come quickly, for we do not have the luxury of time. Yep, <laughs> looks like we found the Inspector Hildebrand. Actually, it was Bryden who did so, but whatever. So let's go and speak with Bryden and see what he has in mind. You've come. Excellent. With that buffoon suitably distracted, we can get to more important matters. But before we proceed, what might I call you? Well, the Warrior of Light would be nice. An unremarkable name, but it will suffice. <laughs> I'll screw you! I saved your ass and all of Eorzea! What have you done? Now answer me this, E.D. You were there when the Phantom Thief, in the disguise of Lady Dorida, stole off with that treaty blade. Was there anything about the false disguise that struck you as particularly noteworthy? The identical appearance? Um, <laughs> the perfect mannerisms, or that is for me to know. The identical appearance, obviously. The obvious answer, and yet all too many, a certain self style gentleman comes to mind, could not recognize a clue if he hit him upside the face. Your observation is astute. A thorough inspection of the mask left behind at the scene revealed a tiny prism sewn into the fabric. It is this stone that will allow him to change appearances at will. Clearly our man is no ordinary thief. Magic starts at the grasp of the common folk are at his disposal. This in itself gives us insight to his identity and his ways. And yet, this is not what caught my eye. No, from movements to mannerisms, to that utterly obnoxious personality, the thief did not merely look like Lady Derrida, he was her. Such a feat could not be accomplished by magical trickery alone. We are dealing with a clever and thorough criminal. Not content to rely on his impar power of disguise, he studies his targets closely before assuming their identities. He emulates them utterly and completely, that not even our closest friends or family could detect the autosemis. When the key players arrived at Costa del Sol three days ago when preparations for the banquet began, this would afford our thief more than enough time to study his would-be target. And yet, some disguises are more challenging than others. Put yourself in the mind of the far phantom, Edie. If you were the thief, whose identity would you first assume? <laughs> A brass blade or one of the guests? Or I will not say. Well, I'm gonna go with one of the guests, because they're the people who are closest to the bride. Well dear, the guests are well acquainted with each other. One misstep in the thief's cover will be blown. No, there is a more logical first target, one that would afford the opportunity to gather the knowledge he needs and at last risk. Yes, one of the blast brass blades of the Gabara. Strong in number, few of worlds, able to come and go as they please. A fearsome reputation to scare away any who would draw near enough to realize something was amiss. An ideal entry into Costa del Sol for our man. Did you sing as much? I made the point to question blast brass blades in the area. Little to my surprise, I learned that there was one man who had not been seen at his favorite outhouse for three days past. A thief has not made a habit of want or murder. Doubtless the poor man is lying naked in a ditch not far from here. In addition to general security duties, each of the breads has been assigned to serve as a bodyguard for one or more of the guests. If the man can tell us of his assigned charge, lack as not, his answer will reveal the current identity of a thief. 
A thief would have not had the time to carry the unconscious man foul. I will come across the area. You must begin your search on the outskirts of Costa del Sol. Yes, I believe I can do this for you. So, where will we find this man? We don't have an arrow to indicate where he could be, or a circle. Because usually these things identify where the guy is. And there's no ye Okay, I see the yellow circle. I can see the yellow circle now. Okay, yeah, he's all the way down at the bottom of the map. Alright. Let's see if we can find this person. Yeah, wow, he's all the way down at the very south of Eastern Lanosea. He's as far south as you can be in Eastern Lanosea. That, that's quite some distance to drag a man. And look what could be waiting for him here. Giant crabs, among other things, that could claw and snap at him to tear up his body. It certainly is not an enviable position to be in. So, let's find where the guy is. Yes, here we are right here. And the guy even has his hands tied behind his back. Sir? Let's help you out. Excellent. You are one of the less incompetent assistants I have worked with. Um, thank you. Uh, thank the gods! Please free me from these chains before the slippers eat me alive! And so after we do... There. Now tell me all you can remember about what happened to you, and try to be brief. Uh, we had just arrived in Costa del Sol, had a briefing of sorts. Master Guguremu gave us each our orders. We who would be looking after and the like, had a mind to tour the area, get my bearings. Next time I knew, I felt a thwart of Akuma at the back of my head. When I came to, here I was, stripped to my skivvies. Well, should the chagrin of those of us who are to look at you. You say you received orders from Master Guguremu, who was to be your charge. My memory is hazy, but uh, one was Morgant, father of the groom. The other was Lala Felengen from Limsa. Your tour, no tour. Now, try your best to remember. Were there any other guests with whom you were ordered to interact? Uh, come to think of it, yes. Uh, there was also the steward, Lewenhart. I was to view him with the schedule of event, with him the schedule of events, discuss the protection of key supplies, that sort of thing. Morgan, your tour, no tour, and Lewenhart. Uh, thank you for an incompetent fool. Your testimony has proven astonishingly enlightening. I shall see this man back to the city and into the possession of some new clothes, after which I will return to Costa del Sol to continue the investigation. Go ahead and ahead of me, and for the love of gods, just make sure that imbecile doesn't cause too much trouble in my absence. <laughs> yeah, I think Hildebrand was right about you being condescending Inspector Briarton. Anyway, let's work back to Costa del Sol. Yeah, it's not that far of a trip, but we want to keep the, keep everything going here. So back to Costa del Sol we go. So, our Hildebrand, our good buddy Hildebrand, should be right over here, underneath the canopy. Yep, right here with the Ellie and Nashu. Hey there, Hildebrand. It's been a while. Oh, there you are, friend. And not a moment too soon. For I was about to commence my investigation on Nunashd. Tell me, did you and Inspector Brydens Avenue of Inquiry bear fruit? Well, here's what we found out. Morgant, Yoltul Noto, and the steward Lewenhart, you say. This does not surprise me. Yes, I consider them all exceptionally suspicious from the start. With the Lapis Maiden in danger, we cannot afford a moment's delay. I, Hildebrand, shall have our thief and shackles before the Inspector returns. Fear not, friend. The Inspector shall be none the wiser. Ha <laughs> If he had hoped to number the fiend for himself, he should not have simplified the task for me so. Ah, there is one of our suspects standing suspiciously under that canopy over there. Just you wait, fiend. I shall rip the mask from your face and reveal you for the rogue that you are. Like, are you sure that's a good idea? 
I mean, you don't want to cause too much of a ruckus. I mean, yeah, you want to find out who the person is, but you don't want to overdo things. So first, let's speak with Morgant. Stombach friend, the man we pursue is a criminal mastermind. The mere slip of the tongue put our case. Nay, our very lives in danger. But have no fear, Miss Shelley. Ready or quill that you might record my every word, as I implore the time-honored part, part of parley, handed down from wonderful man of Asia's past to reveal our fool. Does this parley involve physical combat? I can think of a few topics that would interest my readers less than your blatherings. Just catch the thief so I can have my story, would you? <laughs> Don't worry, Inspector. I brought my quill and journal, too. Your undrawing fans won't miss a word. Capital. That is why you are my favorite assistant, Nashu. Now behold, as I ensnare a prey with a web of words leading to his inevitable demise. Well? Good day, Master Gugremu, and a fine day it must be for most of you. Oh, for you most of all. Allow me to offer my most heartfelt congratulations on your betrothal to the enchanting Miss Alabella. What is this nonsense? Alabella's my daughter, you... Just who in the Seven Hills are you anyway? Gods! Gods! <laughs> now you're... Now you're old Chocobos, Gigarumu. I recognize the lad. This lad is Hildebrand, agent of inquiry and an inspector extraordinaire. Come to save the lovely last from the clutches of the Phantom Thief, have you? I reckon we owe the man our gratitude, Ivan. Uh, the Phantom Thief? Balderdash and Ross, if you ask me. That said, my betrothed must be quite the beauty indeed to have such rumors told about her. Perhaps she's worthy of me after all. <laughs> you exude an unusual degree of confidence of for such an a fit fashion challenged youth. Bosha Swishers. He's a damn sight easier on the arms than you. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> That's me, Vaughn. Ever calm in the face of danger. Truly is his father's son. A worthy heir to the Brugger Consortium, and a worthy match for my daughter, I must say. Yes, I foresee many years of prosperity for our families. Or family, I should say. <laughs> Which reminds me, Mr. Vaughn. Arabella asked me to convey her gratitude to you for the golden clasp you sent some months ago. It has not left her neck since this day. Oh, that little trinket. T'was nothing. Tell yours also the greatest treasures in the realm will be hers once we are wed. <laughs> The time on a mandible art of parley? We'd be sleeping with the fishes now had Morgant not spoke up on your behalf. That said, nothing about the interactions between the three struck me as particularly unusual. <laughs> Let us not run to my conclusions, Miss Shelley. A gentleman fancies a more methodical approach. Yes, everything is proceeding according to my master plan. Whoops, I was supposed to take this down, wasn't I? Everything is proceeding according to my master plan. <laughs> I only sought to earn the trust of the families before confronting Yalto Noto and Lewenhart, who have aroused my suspicion from the start. Come, we have a thief to apprehend. Alright. So next up is Yalto Noto. Let's see what information we can glean from speaking with this particular individual. And hey, even Lewenhart is here. So what call can we learn? Hmm, I've not seen your faces around here. With the East Old Donald Trading Company, are you? Uh, actually, no. Why, yes, good sir, very much with them. Shall my show even are the East Old Donald Trading Company. <laughs> oh, pleasure to meet you. Do tell. Is the Lapis Maiden as lovely as they say? Sion is here no slouch herself, but she's like, but like me, she's getting on in years. Uh, no offense intended, my dear. Oh, but where are my manners? You also know to the Brugger Consortium, and this is my wife, Sana. I look forward to many profitable dealings with you and yours in the moons and years to come. I dare say this wedding and the joining together of our family businesses couldn't be happening at a better time. What with all the manner of fell beasts and beastmen taking aim at our wares? Why, just the other day, a shipment of imported foodstuffs was waylaid by the Mandragoras. Nasty buggers, the lot of them. If I were 20 years younger, I'd dice them up myself and make a salad out of... <laughs> you, you have heard of Mandragora, Zaiti? But, but of course, I once spent a year holding body, mind, 
and mine with a fist of Raga. My fellow monks and I will chant several hundred martial watches a day. <laughs> and your food source will occasionally be raided by the ruthless band of rogue vegetables known as the Mandragoras, yes? Would it kill you to read the Mytholai and educate yourself from time to time? A fearsome lot they are. Rumor has it that the Lord rests until every fruit or vegetable harvested for consumption has been free from captivity. Why they struck here at the larder here just days ago. Our supplies were decimated. Fear not, my lady. I was able to arrange for an emergency shipment to replace the stolen produce. It arrived safely some time ago. Settle down, Sina. Forgive me, wife. She's always saying how meat is bad for her figure. And with that, I best can prepare me speech. Carry on, lads. Cromany, none of those three were suspicious and unleashed, but we must not give up hope, lest he of many faces have the last laugh. Whether there is a will, a gentleman shall find a way. Come, Lashu, we must move quickly or the Lapish Maiden shall not be the only one to come to harm. You speak so fast, Inspector, the son of a quick mind, I'm sure. Now where was I? Give up hope, he of many faces will last, the Lapish Maiden shall not be the only one to come to harm. I'm not sure how that captures the inspector's intended meaning. But this is no time for us to be standing around. Inspector Bryden will be back any moment now, and he's not the type to suffer excuses. Quite sure, Miss Shelley. Fortunately, I have a plan. Let us investigate the food stuff for which Master Lewenhart spoke. Should we find any contradictions in his testimony, we can consider the man a prime suspect. Inspector Bryden will be back before long. Come, Lashu, this is no time to delay. And so now, we have to finish this particular quest by inspecting the supplies that just arrived. So, let's hit the water running in this instance. Yeah, we would be hitting the ground running, but in this instance we're hitting the water running. Now, the only question is... Alright, so it should be up at the top of the lighthouse area. Yeah, and yes, there is a lighthouse that's next to Costa del Sol. Yeah, we often have not seen this particular item, due to the fact that, well, for the most part, we never actually come up here. Yep, we go. So yeah, among the water buffalo and whatnot, we will find what we seek. So hopefully... Oh, is it actually down there? It is down there. Ugh, my bad. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry about that. Yeah, the map was leading me to the top of the peninsula, not the bottom of it. Alright, let's inspect the food supplies. And one of them in particular looks really suspicious. You'll find out why in a moment. Creation of sorted foodstuffs and a veritable portion of luscious looking coconuts. It appears that a man learned how to spoke true? EGOD! Did you see what I see? Are those explosives I, can I spied concealed amongst these coconuts? Perhaps I spoke in haste. It would appear that we have found our phantom thief after all. Oh, those are mine, Inspector. I was looking for a place to set them down, you see. And those coconuts were looking awfully lonely. Now, Shu, yeah, remember, she used explosives to bring Inspector Hildebrand to his senses in the first mystery. Now, Shu, far be it for me to cast doubt on your choice of hobbies, but what in the name of the Twelve will possess you to bring your creations to an investigation? Well, they were so helpful in jogging your memory that one time, and I just thought, uh, uh, does this mean you won't be needing this piece of, piece of driftwood either? Your enthusiasm is always admirable, Now, Shu. But in this event, I feel it was somewhat misdirected. Now shut down the driftwood over there, and concentrate on taking your notes like the astute assistant you are. And so she does. I say that we are most fortunate that confounding Inspector Briarden is otherwise occupied at the moment. When he had to chance upon the scene, he would veritably explode in rage. Now let us dispose of these things before an errant ember sends us all to a fiery demise. Confounding Inspector Bryden, explode, a fiery demise, got it. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I 
And then... Uh, uh, don't look now, but someone has returned at the worst, the worst possible time. And then that'll be Briar Den. You two are supposed to be keeping an eye on the suspects and staying out of trouble, yes? The Inspector of the Fittivy sees you here. Bob Michelle, should Inspector Bryden come upon these explosions, the consequences will be even more dire. Edie and I will see that the Inspector keeps a wide berth at this beach. You two just get out of here and be quick about it. Quick thinking, Michelle. Come, Rashu. We shall return for your creations once Inspector Bryden has been led safely from the scene. Investigation calls us and we must heed to its cry. Well, that takes care of that. But yeah, that's only took a while. Nearly half an hour to do just the one challenge alone. That's that's pretty nuts. So, I guess it's gonna be one and done for us today, as we get started on this mystery involving Inspector Hildebrand and the Lapis Maiden who is to be married who we have not yet even seen. I mean, considering that the bride and groom have never crossed sides with each other before, Suffice it to say, this has all the makings of an arranged marriage. So, with all that taken in mind, we will leave our next inspection challenge for next time. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV on Runway Born. And when I join you again, we will see what Inspector Briarden has in mind as we continue to search for the Phantom Thief in the hopes that he will not take the Lapis Maiden's treasure. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.